the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Grace, take that fire. Bring them out. Shele parutasia, embrakato shelia. This is koinonia. Shila parus ke barutiasha. You're being shifted to dimensions in the spirit. Parus ke labrende ke talias ke ba. Everyone pray in the spirit. Shele barakatas ke ba. Rekete barutos ke badiata. Just bring only those in the main auditorium, those in the overflows. You can bring them to the front of their projector screens. I shift you by prophecy. New dimensions, levels in the spirit, dimensions in the spirit. Encounter grace, encounter grace. Up the balcony, encounter grace in the name of Jesus. A man can receive nothing except it is given unto him from the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is asking me to prophesy speed for someone the days of delay. Shakata, a A grace is coming upon your destiny. Speed, speed, speed. By the Spirit, help them, please. By the Spirit of the Living God. Parus Please, whether you are an usher or not, help them. In the name of Jesus, the overflows, the basement, outside, I declare grace upon your destiny. Grace upon your destiny. Shetas kabaranto shelebahasya. Give it love by your spirit. If it's not from your fire upon your justice, new dimensions in the spirit. If it's not by your spirit, Hallelujah. We'll be seated shortly. But let me speak over a closed door over someone's life. I'm doing this by the Spirit. Tonight is not a miracle service. But I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and I decree and declare, hear me, in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God, that any door that has refused to open over your destiny, I declare over it, a father be open. A father be open. A father be open. Be open. Be open. Doors of ministry be open. Doors of power. Be open. Shallah. 
Please open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit everywhere. Open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit. Inside, outside. Those following online. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Edify your spirit man. This is koinonia. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Shake up Arato Sadabalakatos. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Building capacity in the spirit. Majesty. Shebeleke Parabosa. Separatos Kebranda Baladabus. Shalabarakatos Sabeleke Baladabas. Just as I am, in the presence of Your Majesty, yeah. I'm forever changed by Your love. In the presence of Your Majesty, Majesty. those in front here before you go back to your seats i decree and declare that everything that represents captivity in your life comes to end now and that this grace you have contacted will speak again and again in your life in the name of jesus please go back to your seat if you can god bless you there is a woman here this is one two three four five years You've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Where is she? You are wearing a dress and the hand is black. Is there someone like that? The hand of your dress. Who is that? <laughs> Madam, have I met? Do I know you anywhere? No, sir. <laughs> Where are you coming from? Look at me. How many years? Five years. Five years. Yes, Where sir. is your husband? He's not in the country. Sir. I need to pray for you because your season of laughter is about to begin. Hey, hey. Listen. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Please look at me. Listen. Listen to me. My dear people, hear me. You see, when God does these things, it is not it is not a showmanship it's, it's not about the vessel focus on what jesus is doing more than what the vessel is doing madam what's your name Gloria. am i wasting your time tonight please just be patient see this is why god sent us to this city because madam who is gloria here who is gloria what's your name gloria gloria yes, from sir. where from ben i'm from lupe airport road you came from airport road yes sir who did you come with my husband let the person come your life is about to change <laughs> sir please stand up stand up stand up 
listen please let me say this hold on please you know many times when you see unusual dimensions of the spirit like this most times bring her I command that spirit let her go now leave her it's over madam look at me two of you your life will so change in the name of Jesus Christ I release grace on you both by the power of the Holy Spirit sir what do you do stand up things have been going down for you yes sir don't be embarrassed this is the house of god yes sir listen to me this started from year before last yes sir. into last year and if i don't pray for you right now you are being constrained but one two three the month of may yes, is a strange month of lifting for you my god himself is lifting you into supernatural dimensions do you have children how many years have you been married four years sir don't cry oh my god in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god i speak like eli spoke to hannah according to the time of life in the name of jesus christ return with your miracle children sir look at me there is the place of physical value where you offer products and services but there is a spiritual dimension you believe that yes sir. i want to pray for you lift your hands you i stretch my hands towards you grace comes on you and it will take you and your wife to new dimensions in the spirit dimensions of favor in the name of jesus madam please weep no more you see he said weep no more for the lion of the tribe of judah five years hold on please madam don't cry jesus is lord this is more than a man there is nothing a man can do for you i pray in the name of jesus and i stretch my hands towards you by the god of heaven you will stand on this same altar or any altar that is available representing this ministry and you would testify to the good hand of God I stretch my hands and I declare barrenness help her look what is happening to her this is five years no child the Bible says for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy this is not about explanation and discussion this is kingdom come a revelation of the reality of Jesus I stretch my hands and I declare captivity comes to an end now in the name of Jesus I don't know why you're for the same reason where are you from no your state of origin Oshun State. Oshun state. Yes. I want to pray for you look at me shout Jesus as loud as you can I decree and declare look what is happening to her I curse that spirit right now did the Bible not say blotting out every handwriting it says and every ordinance that spoke against us he nailed it the Bible says to his cross I decree and declare let it be over right now my dear this lady what's your name how long have you been married five years no child you believe in Jesus I want to pray for you look at me it is over now I stretch my hands by the spirit of grace and I pray I don't care what the medical report is in the name that is above all names according to the time of life return with a child and for all of you who are left in Jesus name I minister to you in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says and whatsoever name Adam called it that was the name thereof in the name of Jesus this lady where's she from from Ondo State. Ondo State. Can I pray for you? Yes, sir. How long have you been married? Ten years. Ten years. No yes, child. Sir. Yes, sir. Now, you may never know the need for a miracle until you are in that position. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me, my dear. I stand by the God of heaven and I declare to you that it's a new season. By the power of the Holy Spirit. 
in the name of Jesus. Can you celebrate Jesus and be seated? How many of you love Minister Freke? My goodness, my goodness. We honor you. We love you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Hallelujah. Please be seated. This is the house of God. This is Koinonia. Second Timothy chapter 3, please. We have to be very fast tonight. Second Timothy chapter 3. Let me start by sincerely appreciating everyone. Thank you for your love, your kindness. It's one thing to be called of God. It's one thing to be sent into a territory. But it's one thing to be believed, to be received. And we truly appreciate you for opening your hearts. And in the name of Jesus, God is already doing great things and he won't stop. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ. So let's go to the word. Second Timothy chapter 3 from verse 16. Second Timothy 3 and verse 16. Help us please. Do we have that projected? Second Timothy chapter 3. The Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Please, let's have our attention together now. The Bible says, and is profitable. He's talking about scripture now. That scripture is profitable for doctrine, number one. Number two, for reproof. Number three, for correction. Number four, for instruction in righteousness. Why? Verse 17. It says that the man of God, the man of God here does not mean a minister necessarily, even though contextually speaking Paul was writing this letter to his son in the gospel Timothy it was part of his apostolic ministry to strengthen Timothy who was in ministry actively and he was telling him that that the man of God please give it back to us that the man of God may be perfect the word perfect there means mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works so the Bible reveals to us that scripture is the basis for the maturing of the saints as powerful as miracles and signs and wonders are they do not sustain the ability to mature the saints the saints cannot be matured just by the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit the prophetic miracle signs and wonders these are consolations these are tokens of God's love representations of his power but in themselves, they do not sustain the ability to mature the saints. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible encourages believers to be grounded and established in the truth of God's word. And the strategy that was invented by the intelligence of God to help believers mature is called doctrine. Doctrine is God's way of helping believers to come into maturity doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina it means an accepted body of truth an accepted body of knowledge listen the truths that make for our excelling in the kingdom are finite there is an exact body of truth that we can lay hold of and then we will walk in experience in victory here on earth you know the narrative that has been given in the body of christ is that um our pursuit for spiritual truth is infinite it's not a very accurate theology it is the knowledge of god pressing into the person of god that is infinite we will continue to know him for eternity but as far as our living on earth is concerned our representing his purposes the exact body of truth allocated can be known you can have that body of truth like a student who will go through a university system he can graduate he can exhaust the curriculum it does not mean he will stop learning learning continues but he can exhaust the body of truth allocated for that field of study are we together those are a set of beliefs that are accepted and are taught sadly the tragedy across africa especially and even our nation 
is that there is hardly a commendable level of spiritual maturity among believers we see signs and wonders just like we witness by the grace of god and to the glory of god we are encouraged but that that steadfastness most believers the average believer is not yet established in the truth of god's word this is where the ministry of the word comes in the assignment of the word of god is to help establish and mature believers why because if all we live by are miracles signs wonders as important as they are we will not be able to experience the fullness of god in our lives because a lot in the kingdom depends on growth and maturity if you're with me say amen, amen. are we together make it a culture to always come with something to write it is important it is proof of value to the word of god that you have and so by the grace of god here we will trust god for grace as much as we experience the manifest hand of god we will focus very greatly on doctrine truths that help and mature and establish believers to the end that we become steadfast not missing in any area are we together let me give you an example of a few doctrinal truths in the bible that are worth knowing number one truths that relate to the new birth and redemption it is important for instance that believers understand the entire scope of the work of salvation you will be amazed at how many believers and respectfully speaking even leaders in the body of christ who cannot intelligently articulate the work of redemption it's like a doctor with no knowledge of anatomy no knowledge of physiology how did you become a doctor are we together now yeah these are foundational truths believers have to understand what happened from the beginning they have to understand the fall of man they have to understand jesus as perfect theology the mystery of the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus these are foundational pillars we may differ in our levels of our approach to ministry but these are foundational pillars of the christian faith if they are not known we cannot walk in victory truths like the identity and the authority of the believer in christ paul as part of his apostolic ministry took out time all through the epistles especially the book of ephesians when you read he took out time to give a very clear exegesis of the truth of god's word to help the believers understand their position in christ there is a positional advantage that we have in christ and believers must understand this if we do not understand these basic truths and then you go to deeper and weightier matters of the spirit you will find out that we become ever learning but never coming into the experience the knowledge of the truth this is the tragedy of the average believer we are not in ignorance but there is we have a deluge of spiritual truth whose relevance we cannot point in our lives we know almost every topic we know almost every great teaching but to be able to sequentially arrange them and produce constructive victory in our lives most times we do not know how to combine them the concept of sin the concept of righteousness the concept of uprightness the concept of holiness the concept of salvation the concept of the gospel these are very important i'm just running through very intelligent spiritual issues that every congregation every man of god who intends to build a people of power and grace must ensure that somewhere in their growth process these foundational truths are captured in their experiences lack of the understanding of these things will give the devil an edge over the believer are we together then the ministry of the word of god this is a doctrinal truth that we must understand what is the value of the word of god the average believer studies the bible studies scripture and exposes himself to spiritual truth just to ease the guilt of not looking spiritual or to conform to a religious ritual the bible talks about the logos of god john 1 verse 1 it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god very powerful scripture 
so you have to understand what the word of god is because the bible tells us that man shall not live by bread alone but that he must live by every truth that proceeds from the mouth of god then the ministry of the holy spirit listen let me tell you there are so many believers who want to walk in the reality of the power and the glory of god many sincere preachers many in the body they want to enjoy certain levels of victory but they have not been taught constructively taught about the person and the ministry of the holy spirit even though the holy spirit plays a very vital role in salvation there is a separate encounter with the person and the office of the holy spirit are we together then we talk about kingdom living we now begin to bring believers into the revelation of the kingdom jesus began to talk to us about the kingdom what is the kingdom the character of the kingdom i'm showing you doctrinal truths that if ignored there is no church happening i guarantee you then kingdom concepts like faith kingdom concepts like hope like love like peace these are very powerful truths that must be taught the believer you have to understand what the peace of god is what it means to live and walk in love the power of hope the power of faith the bible talks about faith being a shield it says wherein with it will be able to quench every fiery dart of the enemy then we now come into subjects of the realm of the spirit the reality of the satanic kingdom that has been so ignored by many people in an attempt to show the excellency of the reality of the finished work of christ we have ignored the fact that there is a devil roaming around our horizon and the bible tells us to not be ignorant of his devices this is where truths that deal and relate with spiritual warfare the reality of the satanic kingdom the fact that there are real demons who are out to sabotage the purposes of God in the life of the saints and that if the saints are not equipped with the requisite level of spiritual intelligence then we may not be able to walk in victory are we together then we come to the ministry of prayer prayer was such a powerful subject that the disciples came to Jesus and said teach us to pray so you don't just learn prayer by praying alone you are taught how to pray their issue was not prayerlessness their issue was inaccurate prayer there was something about the prayer of jesus and the result that came from his prayer and they said teach us to pray then he began to teach them he says when you pray pray thus he didn't just say recite these words it's a spiritual formula abba father when you pray pray with the acknowledgement that there is a source a sustainer a defender then it says which art in heaven that means you will need faith in your prayer because it's not in your domain you are interacting with two realms then hallowed be your name that you come to him with the spirit of reverence your kingdom come prioritize the kingdom because if the kingdom comes many things you want to ask for will no longer be needed Jesus is teaching prayer so that when you go to the place of prayer you are not just shadow boxing and dissipating spiritual energy that cannot produce results this is largely what we do just because we dissipate a lot of spiritual energy we convince ourselves that on the strength of the enormity of the energy that is dissipated we are making contact in the spirit it may not be so one man prayed and a territory was shot it was it was deprived of rain one correct prayer then we talk about the subject of kingdom advancement listen if you're a man of God here you may want to write some of these things down and build a catalog of your spiritual your mentorship system to the members this this is these are the truths that members should come to receive they are not opinions they are doctrines these are the truths the pillars upon which the maturity of the saints depend on kingdom advance 
if believers are not king are not taught kingdom advance we are going to live purposeless lives acquiring things that have no eternal value what gives credence to subjects like prosperity and the rest is kingdom subjects like prosperity health advancement success they find their correct bearing when they are the subjects are dealt with with respect to kingdom if kingdom is not in view it is risky and dangerous even destructive to mentor people and teach them these things because all of these things are spiritual arsenals that were supposed to help the believer to become efficient to an end the end is thy kingdom come are we still together then we talk about subjects like purpose and destiny never downplay the fact that believers need to find fulfillment in their lives they will not indefinitely just be career people they will not indefinitely just be church goers for many years sooner or later they will have to confront the subject of meaning what is my life about nobody will waste his time indefinitely no matter how sincere you are as a man of god as a preacher as a spiritual platform you must be able to mentor the people to find meaning for their lives it is lack of meaning that exposes people to all kinds of violence when people do not live for a cause that is bigger than their needs they can become prey to the devil purpose and destiny very powerful it defines the coordinate for your focus it gives you discipline it helps to channel your energy constructively so you wake up in the morning justifiably so and you sleep late you sleep in the night with joy in your heart knowing that you're making constructive advancement then we have to talk about truths like the end times the reality of the afterlife is a subject that many people may not want to touch the bible says if our hope is only in this life this world it says we are of all men most miserable to understand the gravity of that statement you have to examine how miserable men look because the bible says you are a miserable man at any level is not a good sight and then the bible says you are of all men most miserable it is true that jesus is coming back and my goodness there are all kinds of doctrinal and theological and archaeological arguments as to it believers must be able to find comfort why because in a congregation like this sincerely speaking even though it is not our intention as time progresses people will lost will lose loved ones is that true people will have to mourn loved ones either because their time is up or for some reason and there must be a doctrinal foundation that gives them strength at that point it takes more than an impulsive comfort for two three days people must derive sustainable strength on a revelation of what happens after this life it is on the strength of that you can now say like paul for for me to live is christ and to die is gain so if you declare long life it's not out of fear it's because you need time to make kingdom come happen but if at all the flight comes you go with joy knowing that you have cheated death already is god helping us these are the doctrinal truths these are like spiritual classes schools of the spirit that you have to pass through you cannot go through these things and still be weak and be tossed to and fro the bible says it is for this that the bible says ephesians chapter 4 when you read from verse 10 to this end the bible says he gave unto some apostles and prophets evangelists pastors teachers for the maturing the equipping of the saints that the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry to the end that will attain that stature in the spirit it says not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive stability comes through doctrine then we will not also neglect matters of life like the economic system of the kingdom look at me did you know that the kingdom of god has an economic system that must be studied there are different systems all across this cosmos but god has his economic system that means there is a kingdom provision for the welfare of the saints 
it is irresponsible and i submit to you with all due respect it is irresponsible for a man of god to have the privilege of being with a congregation for many years and not expose them to the economic system of the kingdom because these are matters of life it's not just about prayer and trusting god to come there are school fees to be paid there are real issues that pertain unto life and if believers are not taught they will have to adopt any option that is available and most of the options you would have to trade your soul in exchange so he said what shall it profit a man if you will gain these are business languages gain the world and lose your soul he says i wish above all things that you prosper and be in health there is an economic system designed for the kingdom and i will respectfully observe that the challenge with the body of christ is that most times our doctrines are inaccurately communicated that means it's it's is garnished with a plethora of imbalances so on one hand we have people who teach believers for instance that all it takes to prosper is just to focus on the spiritual laws of tithing and giving and sowing and that is wonderful there is a place for that and then they ignore the fact that there are principles of value and productivity that synergize themselves together to make believers exceptional so believers continue to obey the spiritual laws the spiritual laws are responsible for the arrival of the blessings but the natural laws are they arrive they are responsible for the sustenance if you do not know this you will keep having short-lived testimonies one breakthrough and then after five years another one comes the economic system of the kingdom then of course we have to teach believers on things that relate to relationships family life we are relational beings the command be fruitful is a very serious command be fruitful there does not just mean have children be fruitful means be relational because everything multiplies through relationships your business your job your work with God and until we understand principles of relationship prophecy will keep bringing opportunities that lack of knowledge of relationships will keep cancelling out of believers lives there are many people who receive prophetic words may god connect you to destiny help us may god lift you they say amen but not understanding the requisite principles for maintaining and attracting relationships they will be spiritual pray in tongues but if you do not have this as a pastor as a man of god you will never have sustainable membership because the membership are first people before your members and there are there there are principles not only spiritual principles psychological principles that must be in place let me tell you human beings are not stupid they will not indefinitely be loyal to someone and a cause without an interplay of these truths if you are with me say amen probably god is revealing to someone right now this is just an introduction whilst you've heard me speak god is telling you you see the area you have ignored the area of loophole the area of of ignorance the area of carelessness in your life becomes the access point of satan now we celebrated wonderful testimonies here from people who miraculously within a week Look, the wonder-working power of God. Now, the anointing has played its own course. It's left for them to understand the principles of relationship now to sustain that breakthrough. Is that true? So, receiving a prophetic word is not enough. You have to be equipped with truths like the law of honor to understand these principles. So, when you say a believer is matured, you don't just mean he has been around spiritual things for a long time no it means that he has actively been mentored believers must submit themselves to mentorship not the idea of mentorship we have in our world today that has become an evil and a destructive usurping of the right and the will of men I'm talking of mentorship a system where you submit yourself to a body of spiritual truth to the end that you'll be edified and be matured this is the assignment of doctrine are we blessed 
to see you high and lift it up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 yes the prayer open the eyes of my heart lord is a real prayer open the eyes of my heart i want to see you i want to see you hallelujah two men were with the resurrected christ on the way to emmaus just because they were at proximity with the word did not mean that they had an encounter you can be close to spiritual things for many years and convince yourself that just because you are around spiritual things you are growing they were with jesus and yet did not recognize him but the bible says when the bed was broken their eyes opened can you pray whilst you are seated lord open my eyes let this be a journey of transformation let this be a journey of growth please pray hallelujah praise the name of the lord so for tonight just spare me a few minutes and we're done listen week in week out when you come did you know why we pray that god should bring people we don't pray for people just to celebrate a crowd it's more than that it's a passion to reach as many people there are 3.2 million people demographically speaking in this city if we're unable to reach at least 300,000 people with the truth of God's word to mature them, we're wasting your time and we're wasting God's time. <laughs> yes. You have to believe this. So when you are dragging someone to church, you are not trying to help a ministry grow. You are looking at him and like a doctor you can scan through his life while he comes to say my life you can see the spiritual gaps you you know the laws he's breaking in an instant and you know if god does not help this man just agreeing and praying will not solve the problem because the truths that this person needs to learn are many it is on the that is what sponsors your compassion when you draw someone to the house of God you are already excited because more than an instant miracle he now has the opportunity to be immersed in this spiritual truth so he leaves that service with an enlightened understanding and he would thank you for it while the Word of God is coming he can see the gaps in his life there is a grace given to a man that can open the eyes of men is the grace that causes all men to see so you can see your life in light of this truth and you can say wow i now see why my church is not growing it's not because i'm not from this city i now see this may be what i may be doing wrong and then because you are told to receive with meekness the engrafted word you are not ashamed of god exposing your area of growth it's like saying you are better today than you were yesterday and you receive it with truth then you go back like the foxes of samson and you will do mighty and terrible things for the kingdom this is what i seek by the spirit of god that will happen in our lives that week in let me tell you the truth i give you a guarantee if you come here week in week out and you cannot constructively measure your spiritual growth i am wasting your time please look for something important and do with your life Are we together many times we teach that all you need one encounter with the word is all you need that's a very sincere statement but that's incomplete many people have encountered the word for many years it is the truth that is accurately taught that you receive with understanding and you engage appropriately that produces for you not the truth available access to truth does not transform no 
it must be accurately taught then it must be understood then it must be received by faith the principles contained therein applied diligently then you can commit God's integrity to perform hallelujah let's talk about spiritual growth tonight let's start from there where we're starting from the very foundation this is a new work and so we'll just start and trust God for grace to build us as far as he can help us if we're together say amen first Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11 please let's rush we have to trust God for grace to be very fast tonight and then we pray first Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11 we're discussing the subject of spiritual growth please read with me if you can see it projected inside and outside ready read when I was a child aha uh -huh, I spake as a child I understood as a child I thought as a child but when I became a man I put away childish things please keep that scripture there Paul is admonishing the church in Corinth part of his apostolic ministry and he's talking about the characteristic features that represent childishness in the kingdom that you know a child number one by how you speak you know a child number two by your level of spiritual understanding are we together you know a child by your thought process because your life is a reflection of your thought so we can piece this together and accurately gauge the spiritual level of a man the way that you speak your degree of comprehension and the way you think the way you process spiritual things when I was a child he said this also talks about transition when I was once upon a time he was a child this is a very powerful message because it means men can grow it's a it's a revelation I can come out of my former self into a new version of me that means the version you saw last week while you are talking about that one I have grown you are talking about the version that cannot heal the sick you are talking about the version that is ignorant and that we can evolve into superior dimensions of ourselves in this kingdom very powerful so you can see one who is weak he may even come out for salvation prayer and you watch that person and you're like wow when is this guy going to understand spiritual things just give the person the atmosphere of growth and sometimes as little as weeks under a very correct system of growth you will be surprised what will happen to that person when I was a child I spoke like a child understood as a child and I thought as a child but when I became a man what happened I pushed childish things childish speaking childish understanding childish thinking if you're with me say amen write this down please growth refers to increase in size increase in capacity increase in convictions increase in resources growth refers to increase of all kinds increase in size for instance increase in capacity increase in convictions increase in resources God expects believers to grow. The Bible is full of um, admonishments for believers to grow. God desires that we grow biologically. God desires that we grow intellectually. God desires that we grow career-wise for career people. God desires that we grow financially like we spoke about earlier on. But for this, for tonight, the subject of focus is spiritual growth luke chapter 2 and verse 52 the bible says and jesus grew or he increased luke chapter 2 and verse 52 and jesus increased the bible says jesus your jesus had to grow he increased in wisdom in stature and in favor with god and with man hallelujah write this down please spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a christian not necessarily Luke chapter 11 and verse 52 spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a Christian just because you gave your life to Jesus in 1990 or 2000 or 2010 the 
the passage of time does not necessarily equate spiritual growth listen to this jesus is speaking to the scribes he says woe to you lawyers for you have taken the key of knowledge you've been here for a long time you have refused to enter yourself and you have stopped others from entering most times we pride ourselves just because we have memory of the day that we came out to make an altar call and you hear people say things like i have been a christian for 20 years now that's worth being uh, that's worth um our applause i'm not downplaying it but i'm saying just because you gave your life to christ it's like someone who bought a car in 2000 and just because a car is in his house he tells you he's a driver no the presence of a car does not necessarily mean the ability to drive spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a christian write this point again spiritual growth is not necessarily determined by church attendance and observance of religious activities spiritual growth is not necessarily determined by church attendance and observance of spiritual activities second timothy chapter 3 and verse 7 that means just because you've been around church for a long time and you've been engaging in spiritual activities it does not necessarily mean that you are growing spiritually paul was teaching his son timothy doctrine and he said there are a kind of people who are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth wow preach preacher wow wonderful and just because you've been falling under the anointing for a long time just because you've been around crusades you've been around great programs when they say who are those who have been in church for a long time you will stand up but when we look through your life we do not see the indices that represent spiritual growth is god helping us there is a tragedy please look up there is a consequence for not contending for spiritual growth if you are not exposed to the consequences of remaining a child in the spirit you will not aspire for higher dimensions because you see many times and depending on what kind of spiritual platform we're exposed to many times we find ourselves in situations where we are not encouraged to press into god it's like the most important thing is to give your life to jesus like we say and the moment you have received jesus that's all right after all whatever it is it is heaven there are severe consequences for remaining at that level biologically speaking mothers when you give birth to a child you don't flog that child from day one for not walking you give him some allowance but after a year two years three years you find out your child cannot walk your child cannot talk that becomes a medical issue is that true i have put down here three three tragedies that will befall any believer who does not contend for spiritual growth please walk with me let's hurry up is god blessing us tonight number one the first tragedy that befalls a believer who does not contend for growth is in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 the Bible says having their understanding darkened look up please it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart do you know what this means that means even though you have received the zoe life watch this you have received the life of god it does not mean it will be manifest in your life automatically the riches of that which you have received that resides in christ is released through knowledge and if you do not contend for spiritual growth you may never actualize in experience the potentials that are captured in this life so two believers come this is my great generals just come close to me by the way this is sam ladies and gentlemen for many of you you've heard me say sam and those of you who have been blessed by the song you reign elohim here's the person who wrote the song thank you hallelujah now watch this let me have your attention again watch this 
now did you know that these guys can be born again at the same time are we together filled with the holy spirit at the same time but this man may be subject to a very constructive mentorship system and five years down the line you will see the quality of his christian experience all wise you will see that the reality the riches the 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 manifestation of that life that he has so received when you look at it you will see the quality of his life this man even though truly he's given his life to christ you do not see evidences that demonstrate the reality of the victory of christ in his life the difference is not the love of god the same lord is rich unto all the difference is that one has submitted to a system that makes for growth whereas the other one has been stunted or wallowing around in religion decree and declare in the name of jesus say after me in the name of jesus i obtain grace to grow spiritually so the potential the potential that this life of god that we have this divine life is released as we grow if you do not grow it will only remain in theory that you are a partaker of this divine life but nothing in your life will show forth the excellency of that victory that is in christ are we together tragedy number two what happens to a believer who refuses to contend for growth galatians chapter 4 and verse 1 galatians chapter 4 and verse 1 now i say that an heir an heir means a partaker of a throne a a, a benefactor of an inheritance but for as long as he is a child he is no different from a servant some version says slave even though potentially he was designed to be lord of all look up please the Bible says if you do not grow your experience as one who is in the kingdom and one who is outside the kingdom will be no different does it make sense to you why believers receive the same result as unbelievers it is because just receiving the life of Christ and not contending for growth your results will not change the dynamics that make your life to release the victory that is in Christ experientially is only released at the instance of growth oh, 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 oh. Tragedy number three. What is the third tragedy for refusing to contend for spiritual growth? Is found in Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11. Please give it to us. Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11. Watch this now. Paul again is teaching. He said, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered. Seeing that you are dull of hearing. We are reading to verse 14, verse 12 now it says for when for the time ye ought to be teachers ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles or the doctrines of god and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat 13 for everyone that useth milk everyone that is a child is what unskillful look up let me explain what this means to you when you watch a consultant when he looks at a patient while the patient is talking all of a sudden the the myriads of medical truths that he knows everything is working in an instant he looks at this and says oh i remember there we have one in a million of these cases however i think i know what to do about it on the strength of his mastery a student doctor can look at that and crack his brain and the information there is limited so he can do his best although he's a doctor in the making he can even be a fresh graduate and not be able to do much this is what it means to be unskillful 
so if you do not grow spiritually you can't be a blessing because when people speak to you you don't know what law they are violating and how to help them so you begin to come up with sympathetic statements like one day go better and the bible says you are unskillful you are not like one who is moving with uncanny mastery when you grow spiritually if a family calls you as a man of god we're in trouble what is the trouble all doors are closed uh -huh, immediately the scriptures that will bail them out comes to you you can almost tell them i know what is wrong i know what is wrong it's powerful to know how to help people not just how to sympathize with people you are a blessing to the degree to which you can help someone comes to you now and says i hear that you are a member of this great ministry nothing is working in my life delays there is there's no restoration the moment you hear restoration you know all through scripture everywhere there were losses is the prophetic that brought it back so restoration is exclusively the ministry of the prophetic so you don't just tell that person let's pray god help him that's a careless prayer you seek to introduce him to a true prophetic voice they are taken for a prey and none say it restore this is what it means to be skillful someone comes to you and says i am gifted i'm a graduate but doors are not opening up i have a business and you know exactly what is there because you see james 2 26 says a body without a spirit is dead the business is a body where is the spirit that gives it life so you know what to introduce are you getting blessed if you refuse to grow spiritually you become unskillful you cannot help yourself and you cannot help people this is the tragedy with the poor is responsible for what outcome mastery in the spirit is to be able to connect spiritual laws and their desired outcomes so when you see people and they cry you know what spiritual law to help them with like a doctor when a patient says i'm running temperature and um, i've not been able to eat i even threw up you are not a doctor but help me guess what you think is wrong who taught you that although you are not a doctor notice you did not say run his stomach but don't you know that cholera he also vomits why didn't you say cholera because there are certain things you have been taught through experience that when a patient behaves like this this is how to help the person this can happen to you spiritually listen to me I'm teaching you this so after the grace some of you will run home and say come I found what the problem is I know exactly why this family is not rising yes sir yes sir with accuracy you can know when mama comes to say are you seeing this I went to bed and I had a dream I saw someone speaking to me and he said in this family for the last hundred years nobody has risen and everyone is putting their hand on their head and you now join them what is the excellency of your spiritual investment but the issue is not just saying let's pray don't mind the devil you say that thing you would die like a chicken because many people have arrogantly made bold claims don't stand before Pharaoh until you see the burning bush if you have not seen the burning bush leave pharaoh alone your encounter with the burning bush is what supplies the strength and stamina you can stand before pharaoh and say toss say yet not me the one i met let my people go because pharaoh is stubborn god does not hide the fact that pharaoh is stubborn he will say oh god spoke go mm -mm. he will say who is that you have to show him a token of your encounter that i really met him so you don't talk like people who are not born again when believers are lamenting what is wrong you go to scripture what are the truths the assignment of men of god is to expose you to the various doctrinal bodies of truth that equip you so that you are equipped with sufficient spiritual arsenals on the strength of that you can now go if you are in your office and someone beats his chest and say 
except i am not this you will not rise you don't need to start talking as if you are not born ah, mm, and leave him in peace that man you see you should even be pitying him while he's speaking based on what you know if you actually engage what you know you know that it will cause more destruction for that man so you will search which one can manage the situation and leave the man as a witness listen sit down please don't be excited for nothing look at me this is how dominion is produced dominion is not just an impartation is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom you surround yourself with the principles of the kingdom like chariots they make you a wonder to behold so when you say you are matured in the spirit it's not just by physical stature it's not by the huskiness of the voice it's on the strength of the spiritual arsenals you have so pieced together you have fine-tuned them they are like weapons of war you shoot them with the accuracy of the benjamites one sling and goliath goes down low 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory Cover us with your wings. Go, go, go like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Cover us with your wings. Please sit down. Is God helping us? Yes. So, all of the dimensions that we seek to walk in in the kingdom. They have a body of spiritual truth that is responsible for their lifting. You are a blessing only when you move with these truths. They follow you. Listen, the Bible said, These signs shall follow them that believe. Do you know what that means? When I see what is following you, it's a report card to what you believe. So when I see favor and open doors following you, they are not following you. They are following what you believe. If you want to drive them, don't ask them to go. Change what you believe. They will leave. There are many things we do not want in our lives. You don't drive them by saying, leave me. They are, were designed to honor that belief. If you take it out of your life, they will leave you with it. hallelujah let's wrap up tonight indices to measure spiritual growth let me give you four spiritual indices that help the believer to measure spiritual growth pray in the spirit in one minute as you are seated four indices that help the believer to measure spiritual growth thank you jesus ah from the pages of my heart let my worship begin that never ends someone's life is changing my goodness from the pages of my heart let my worship begin that never ends to the god of all flesh be all my god and your your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Oh my God. Your name is Yahweh. His name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Now. Please let me have your attention we're about to measure to what degree we have grown in the spirit and with it challenge ourselves let me give you an advice never be ashamed when the Word of God comes sustain the ability to tremble at his word without any sense of shame when minister Frecker was here he said we should lift our hands like children that is the attitude he said let the little children come to me he says do not forbid them for for such 
the kingdom of God requires childlike approach I come to you with my heart open and he vets you in light of his truth then you repent repentance is not a word for sinners is the name given to the process that realigns you back to God's patterns is called repentance number one the first index that measures your spiritual growth in this kingdom write it please is your degree of conformity to the image and the character of Jesus in experience of Jesus experientially or in experience Colossians chapter 1 chapter 3 from verse 1 to 15 oh dear let's see if we can hurry up and just walk on these scriptures Colossians 1 verse 3 it says if ye then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ seated on the right hand of God keep reading verse 2 it says set your affections he's showing you a litmus test for your spiritual life set your affection something about your affection reveals your level of growth set your affection on things above he never said don't have the things of the earth but set your affection when your obsession becomes on money on titles on i must make it i must achieve it it is good to aspire to be great but if that's what controls your heart you are far from growth set your affection let's hurry up on things above not on things of the earth verse 3 for ye are dead and your life is hid with christ in god verse 4 very quickly i'll run through it it says when christ who is our life shall appear then ye sh shall ye also appear with him in glory uh-huh now mortify therefore your members that means you have a responsibility mortify your members which are upon the earth fornication uncleanliness inordinate affection evil what's that word and covetousness which is idolatry verse verse 6 it says for which things sake the wrath of god cometh upon the children of disobedience seven in the which ye also walk in some time when ye lived in them eight but now put off all these believers are we together maybe you should read the rest from here one anger number two number three number four number five nigerians repeat number five dear wonderful citizens of this great country reveal try number five again number verse nine La -hi -ah. do i say this one now <laughs> Don't worry, we are together. God is helping us. We are growing in the name of Jesus Christ. It says, lie not to one another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Verse 10. And have put on a new man. Hallelujah. That new man is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Verse 11. We are reading to 15. Where there is neither Yoruba, nor Hausa, nor South South, nor Northerner, nor Middle Beltan, it says, but Christ is all and in all. Let me tell you this. You really know you are transformed when it is difficult for people to connect you with a physical territory. It shouldn't be so obvious that someone sees you and says you are behaving like them. Where are you from? Then he helps you to accurately get where you are coming from. It is proof that you are not transformed. You should be so transformed we, we should be we should be at a loss to connect you to a physical territory that when you tell people where you are coming from they say it's not true how come you are so refined you tell them the process is called growth growth called out of every tribe and tongue and nation into a reality that is beyond the limitations of territory let's finish up the scripture Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, uh -huh, bowels of mercy, uh -huh, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, 13, 
forbearing one another and forgiving one another it says if any man have a quarrel against any even as christ forgave you so also do ye 14 it says above all these things put on love charity there is love he calls it the bond of maturity the zenith of your maturity we're coming there 15 the last verse it says and let the peace of god garrison your heart to the which also ye are called in one body and in all that you do do not forget to be thankful so ingratitude is proof that you are a child are we blessed write this scripture we may not read it second peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7 it tells us we can add to our faith certain spiritual qualities it says add to your faith virtue virtue means moral excellence add to virtue knowledge since they projected it let's just read on verse 6 add to knowledge self-control or temperance add to self-control patience add to patience godliness seven add to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love this love thing again dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bash kana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto pray kate kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.